Hello everyone, Pete here, and a huge new update has just started rolling out over these past few days for the Xbox Ally and Ally X handhelds that introduces an absolutely game-changing feature. Let's blast through how to get this, including something that surprised me, and also the top 10 key aspects that we need to know, including whether it will come over to the ROG Ally handheld. Plus, I'll test out three games to see what difference this new feature brings to us. So let's start with how to get this new update. And so here on the Windows desktop, let's hit the Start button, then go into Windows Settings, then into Windows Updates at the bottom, hit the blue Check for Updates button, and make sure that we're fully up to date, which for me quickly install the Security Intelligence update. Next, let's update our Xbox app. So let's close out, hit the Start menu, head into our Microsoft Store, click on the Downloads button on the bottom left, click on the blue Check for Updates button, and our Xbox app should then get updated. And our most crucial update is of course in Armory Crate. So let's close out of the Microsoft Store, open up Armory Crate, head into Settings, head into Update Center. And once we've checked for updates, then here in our Xbox Ally or Ally X handheld, a brand new Armory Crate version in 2.1.16 should appear right here. So we can hit the Update button to get fully up to date. By the way, we also get this snazzy new update notification in Command Center 2 now. And when we tap on it, it takes us to the update center in Armory Crate. So let's tap update, double check what's going to update here, then tap update now. And this 2.1.16 version only took a few minutes to install. So let's double check as always that it was successful. So heading back into Armory Crate update center, then the check for update section. And something really surprised me here in that it wasn't showing that 2.1.16 that was just installed for some reason, just that it was still on 2.1.15. I tried going into the Windows desktop, then head into the My Asus app, then into the System Update, but a confirmation that 2.1.16 was installed just wasn't showing up here either. Hmm. I knew that it had installed though, as when it opened Command Center, then we didn't get the updates available notification at the top like we had before updating. So yeah, very weird why 2.1.16 wasn't showing up as installed in the Armory Crate Update Center. So let's blast through the top 10 key aspects that we need to know about this new game-changing feature called Default Game Profiles. The first thing is that these are per game device settings, but only for games purchased through the Xbox Store on PC. It struck me as very weird why Xbox Game Pass was not mentioned here. Because if I load up a Game Pass game I've installed here on my Xbox Ally X, like Gears of War Reloaded, by the way, we now get a brand new save game state synced message to you now. That's literally just rolled out, that is so ace. And when we press the Command Center button, we can indeed see that this Game Pass game now has this new default game profile locked in and fully enabled. And the official Xbox blog seems to indicate that games not bought from the Xbox Store, so like from the Steam Store, do not have these new default game profiles, which is a huge shame. But you know what, let's test this out. Here I've got Balatro that I've bought off the Steam Store. Man, the Steam artwork looks so, so ugly in the Xbox app. It's loading up and wow, yes, it actually does have this new default game profile feature now enabled. So I can confirm that games that we have bought outside the Xbox store, like from the Steam store, do indeed work with game profiles, thankfully. This is so, so ace. At two is that the official Xbox blog states that this new game default profile feature is currently only available for the brand new Xbox Ally and Ally X handhelds. Yeah, so those of us who are still rocking the still incredibly awesome RG Ally, or the RG Ally X like I have here, as I can't bear to sell mine even though I have the new Xbox Ally X, then unfortunately we don't have access to these new default game profiles, which really sucks. But you know, let's test this out on the RG Ally X right here. As this new 2.1.16 update has just appeared in my Armory Crate update settings, so let's click update. Okay, so I've just updated and I'm back in Armory Crate with this new update. Let's launch a game that does support this new default game profile feature, which is Silt Song. So let's press the command center button and yes, I can confirm that this awesome new default game profile feature is only available for the new Xbox Ally and Alex handhelds and not for the ROG allies, sadly. The official ROG channel did a live stream and answered the question of whether this new default game profile feature will eventually come to the older ROG Ally devices. And they didn't rule it out, but said that the focus is on the Xbox Ally handhelds right now. So let us know if you'd like to eventually have this new default game profile feature on your RG Alley or Alex below in the comments. 
The third key thing is that these new default screen profiles only work when our Xbox Ally or Ally X is on battery and not plugged in. So let's test this out. We can see here in Bellatro that the default screen profile is enabled when I'm on battery and not plugged in. And now when we plug in our charger, this new default game profile feature is now blacked out and we can't enable it because we obviously don't need battery optimizations when plugged in. Talking of which, App 4 is understanding how it makes games run better, which is by optimizing the thermal design power limits, which is known as TDP, and also frame rate limits too, which of course we know as FPS. So the benefit for us in games when the new default game profile feature is enabled is two things. We'll get better performance in games, and also it'll give us the very best battery life possible so we can play for longer away from a charge, which is so awesome. At five is that these new default game profiles go beyond what games can achieve when we tweak in-game settings on their own. And this is why these new default game profiles are a game changer, because on a recent community poll here on the channel, one third of you great viewers just do not like tweaking in-game settings and just want to play. So you'll absolutely love these new default game profiles. And for the two thirds of us that do love tweaking and tinkering to our heart's content with in-game settings, then we can still do this like with my video tutorials, such as my recent Black Ops 7 vid, and also one of our best resources for us here in our Ally community and the excellent RG Ally Life websites written guides too. At six is to realize that these default game profiles are distributed via an Xbox service, which explains why Microsoft are in no rush to bring these to the non Xbox branded RG Ally handhelds. And as we know that they're applied through army crates by way of the command center area. Key area seven is knowing that only these 40 games or so games on this list, and also a further 30 unannounced games that support default game profiles at launch in this first wave. And I'd highly recommend taking a screenshot of these, and I'll also link to the official Xbox blog on this below, which shows this list. At eight is the fact that game profiles automatically turn on when a game is in focus, then auto turns off when we switch to another app, then auto turns back on when we switch back to the game, which is very neat. So let's test this out. I'm here in Bellatro after just waking my Xbox Ally X after a few hours and the default game profile isn't showing up in the command center, which must be a glitch. So let's go into the app switcher and press X to close out the game. Man, I really do love this quick close feature, by the way. Yep, I'm back in the game and the default game profile is applied. Let's switch into our Xbox app and yep, the default game profile in command center is nowhere to be seen, so it's not applied. And when we go back into our game that the default game profile is reapplied, which is ace. At nine is why these default game profiles are needed, but the Xbox blog states that optimizing games can be a very daunting and time consuming task for the average gamer. With even the more seasoned of us PC gamers taking time away from actually playing games. And so these new game profiles take away a lot of the guesswork so we can enjoy our games better. And finally at 10 is that the official Xbox blog will let us know every month as many, many more games are added over time. So definitely make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and I'll keep us all updated. So let's now test out three games and I'm going to restart into the optimized full screen experience. Now we've rebooted, let's start with Gears of War Reloaded. Let's turn off the default game profile to start with and select the 17 watt operating mode. Here without the default game profile loaded, we're getting in the low 50s FPS, which is still very playable and would be a good experience. Now let's enable the default game profile. And wow, we're getting a rock solid 59 to 60 FPS. And I must say that it does feel slightly extra smoother. But more than that, the thing that I immediately love is that we just don't have to guess whether to put it on silent, performance 17 watt mode, or the higher turbo mode. This new default game profile feature takes care of all of this and it chooses for us, which is amazing. Next, let's test out the criminally underrated Game Pass title, South of Midnight. So the default game profile is off, we're on 25 watts, and our FPS is right at that 59 to 60 mark for a nice, smooth gaming experience already. Let's turn the default game profile on, and it seems to have a very similar CPU and GPU as to before, also hitting close to that full 25 watts power draw, and again, reaching around the 59 to 60 FPS. So there doesn't really seem to be all that much of a difference in this game, but let us know your thoughts about this below. And finally, let's test out a pretty divisive title right now in Black Ops 7. Let's start with the default game profile off and at 25 watts. And I've optimized the in-game settings using my best settings guide link below. So frame rates wise, we're right in that smooth 55 FPS ballpark. This really feels great to play. 
But something that I do notice is that our TDP draw is right at that 39 to 40 FPS mark. That will be a pretty huge drain, of course, on the battery. And when we enable the new default skin profile feature, we're still around that smooth 55 FPS mark. But the big difference for me is that the TDP is limited to 35 watts, which will give us extra battery life while still retaining the same level of FPS, which is ace. I'd love to know what you think about this new brand new default game profile feature. For me, I really love how it really does take the guesswork out of what operating mode to go with, for example. So let us know any differences that you've noticed below in the comments. Like if you found this helpful, subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Don't miss out on something that could be great just because it could also be difficult. I am very guilty of this in that just wanting to stay in my comfort zone. But many times challenging ourselves, like me starting to get in front of the camera, can bring about great things for us. So stay encouraged today, guys. And as an extra bonus treat for staying right to the end, here's our gorgeous rescued cat and her name is Pancake. brand new ultimate emulation guide for the Xbox Ally and Ally X, ROG Ally and Ally X and indeed all Windows based PC handhelds it took me about 30 hours to put together including a super in-depth BIOS guide and you can check that out right here. As always thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.